We live in a day and age where Christianity is spread as the solution to all your pain and suffering, the source of prosperity. But is that really true? That statement may be true, but outside of context, it's one of the most deceitful statements made by Christians today. Today, I'm here to shed light on the truth. I'm Willie Parlier, and this is another Message Monday. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit the button down below. And if you like this video, be sure to hit the like button because it makes a huge difference on reaching people. So first off, let's verify the truth in the statement I just made earlier. Revelation 21.4 says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Philippians 4.19 says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Then Matthew 7.11 says, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? All this is 100% true and is scripture shared straight out of the Bible. But let me give you another instance where somebody shared real scripture. In Matthew 4, 1 through 11, the Bible says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward unhungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence from me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Satan came to Jesus with scripture. But Jesus rebuked Satan with context. So what is the truth about Christianity? Let's go back to Revelation 21.4. It says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. That's true, and we will reach that point, but the reality is, is we aren't there yet. This is talking about post-rapture. This is talking about when we're all reunited into a new place. If you read one and two in the same chapter, the Bible says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. You can't expect all these things to happen on earth yet because the new earth isn't come. We're in a broken and imperfect world. Jesus never came to perfect this world. He came to redeem us from it. So what do we have to expect while we're here? Let's go back to another piece of scripture that's used out of context all the time. In the book of Matthew, chapter 5, the Bible says, And seeing the multitudes, he went up into the mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. But then it gets real. You can't just stop there. The Bible continues to say, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. 
It's plain and simple here that if we stand for the namesake of Jesus, things are going to get hard. It's when we get to heaven that we will receive our reward. John 15, 18 through 19 says, If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. The day we get saved, we are enemies with the world. They hated Jesus. So why wouldn't they hate Christians? Let's go back to Philippians 4.19. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The context is here. You just have to want to see it. Your house is not heavenly. Your home's not heavenly. Your TV's not heavenly. None of your worldly possessions are heavenly. When we go to heaven, all these things are going to stay behind, even our money. But if it's used to glorify the name of Jesus Christ, God's going to make it accessible for us. But don't expect God to provide you with your distractions. Satan's the one who waves those in front of your face. Matthew 7:11 ties into this as well. So what is the gift that God will give? We can find it in Matthew 14, 12 through 18. The Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth within you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Anything you ask in his name. First of all, I want to clarify that, that anything you ask in his name is anything you ask under his authority, under the power of Jesus. If you are not representing Christ in what you are doing, he's not going to deliver it to you. It is what you ask under the authority of Jesus Christ. But the comforter is the spirit. It's the Holy Ghost. You can find the attributes of the Holy Spirit in Galatians 5, 22 through 25. And the Bible says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Why do we need things like long-suffering and faith? Obviously, we need something to get us through this crooked and perverse and messed up world. That's what the Spirit's for. It's the presence of Jesus Christ in us that helps us walk through this place. So I call Christians, preachers, and everyone to stop preaching a watered-down gospel. Stop preaching a lie. It's not fair that we take new Christians and we make them think that everything's going to be hunky-dory and perfect when the reality is they need to know what they're going to face. They need to know that there's still battles ahead and they need to know that Jesus is the victor over it and he is that victory and he lives inside of us. We all live in the same world, evil and righteous people, and the reality is is that world is going to pass away. The only difference between us and non-saved people is that we have a blessed assurance knowing that when this world passes away, we have a better place to go. That place replaces an eternity of suffering with only temporal suffering. But I will leave you with this. John 14, 1-7 tells us, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Jesus is the only way out of suffering for eternity. So if this video wasn't to, to remind you that we do go through hard times, let it be an introduction to salvation. We're suffering here, and Christians are suffering with you. But if you don't accept Jesus, you have an eternity in hell to face. You don't want to suffer forever. Accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. 
Guys, I hope that this helps shed light on why we suffer as Christians, on what happened after we got saved and why things got hard, because this is the truth. This is what it really means to be a Christian. You will be persecuted. You will be hated. You will suffer pain, but you will be redeemed when Jesus Christ returns. Again, if this is your first message Monday and you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that button down there. It helps our ministry grow and so we can share gospel with more people. And if Jesus has saved your soul, leave it in the comments. If Jesus has helped you through hard times, share that testimony. It's our testimonies that help encourage each other and help show people the evidence of Jesus Christ. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you next message Monday.